Hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, the webinar. Only rarely in the life of an individual or the life of an organization is a discovery made that has the potential to change the lives of everybody living on this planet. Tonight, we are all privileged, I can say, with great certainty, to be living in one of those times. Over a quarter of a century ago, Dr. Ralph made the discovery that cardiovascular disease, the biggest killer of mankind then and now, is essentially an early form of what used to be called the sailor's disease, scurvy, clinical vitamin C deficiency. Over the past five years, researchers at the Dr. Rath Research Institute in California have been working on a study to prove the initial discovery as laid out by Dr. Rath all the way back then. Last month, a paper was published finally in the American Journal of Cardiovascular Disease, proving for the first time scientifically that cardiovascular disease is indeed an early form of scurvy, that it does result from vitamin C deficiency. So tonight, we are all privileged to have with us Dr. Rath, who's going to talk about this discovery, the research, and explain its significance to everybody. Dr. Rath, thank you and welcome. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Jose, who's also been involved in the preparation of tonight. Um, I hope everyone is fine. And um, Paul gave a lot of uh, praise to uh, me, to uh, the colleagues, to the discovery. I'm normally reluctant to accept that, but in this case, it is justified. What we're talking about tonight is a breakthrough that um, literally affects every human life today and uh, in future generations. And it is up to us to make a decision. Do we want future generations to die from cardiovascular diseases like flies, like today? Do we want this epidemic to continue? Or do we have the determination to stop it based on the discoveries we made? If we look at the spectrum of diseases on the chart from the World Health Organization, we see that cardiovascular diseases are still the number one single most important disease. About one third of all deaths on this planet are attributable to cardiovascular diseases, heart attacks and strokes. Altogether more than 17 million each year. That's the elimination of a large metropole like uh, New York City or Tokyo every year. There's a law of medicine that is important if we read in the news breakthrough on cardiovascular disease uh, on the basis of this or that pharmaceutical drug. And that law says epidemics persist only as long as the genuine cause of a disease is not understood and therefore no specific preventive and therapeutic measures can be developed. In other words, if the cardiovascular disease epidemic continues at a level that we just pointed out, it means that its nature, its true nature at the cellular level is not understood. Whatever they tell you, whatever they write about this disease, however they celebrate their own alleged victories, it's all a big fallacy.
if uh, some of the most uh, striking phenomena of cardiology cannot be answered by the cholesterol hypothesis. For example, why do we get infarctions of the heart but rarely of other organs? Why do we get plaques, atherosclerotic plaques in the arteries but not in the veins? Cholesterol is everywhere at the same level. Most strikingly, perhaps, why do animals not get heart attacks? But this disease kills about every second man and woman among the human race. During the past century, attention of research focused actually on the composition of the atherosclerotic plaques in the coronary arteries and in the cerebral arteries. Researchers and doctors wanted to know what is it composed of. And here you see what they thought are the main compositions. On the left hand side you see a lipid globule carrying cholesterol, triglycerides, and other fats. In the middle, you see the protein that gives this lipid globule its stability. It's called apolipoprotein B100. And it goes in and out in this, of this uh, globule and forms a lipoprotein. So lipids and a protein form a lipoprotein molecule. And they gave the name low-density lipoprotein, or LDL, to that particle. And until now, the textbooks of medicine, the doctors in their offices and the hospitals, they tell you it is this bad cholesterol particle that you should lower in your bloodstream in order to prevent cardiovascular events like heart attacks and strokes. In fact, 30 years ago, two scientists from Texas got the Nobel Prize for identifying regulatory mechanisms how LDL molecules can be removed from the bloodstream and metabolized in the cells. This Nobel Prize did not accelerate or improve our knowledge and our understanding about this disease because these regulatory mechanisms they were awarded for explained only 5% of the cases of cardiovascular disease, the LDL receptor defect. So what about the other 95%? No one seemed to care. LDL was in it, cholesterol was in it, and while it did not improve our understanding about this disease in a significant way, it certainly did this. It created the platform for an entire new industry, the cholesterol lowering industry. And here you see the dimension of this business. From 1990 to 2010, it increased to $40 billion in annual sales for statin drugs alone. Selling a hoax. Selling the promise of ending cardiovascular disease on the basis of a false concept. And this is the result. While the cholesterol-lowering drug industry is blossoming, the disease continues to blossom too. These are statistics from the World Economic Forum from 2011. And as you can see, the predictions of this disease are staggering. It will go up to 70 million heart attacks and strokes 
per year until the year 2030 if if we don't do anything against it. So what now is the great news of tonight? Well, it depends on a small molecule, which I will explain to you in the next slides. This is how it would look under microscope, under high magnification. You already know the starting point, the LDL particle in the upper left-hand corner. But that's not the culprit. For that particle to become malicious, to become a contributing factor to the formation of atherosclerosis, it needs an additional adhesive tape, a protein that is very sticky, which has the name apoprotein little a or apo little a. And together, LDL and apoA form a new lipoprotein which is called lipoprotein A or LPA. As you can see, there's a high similarity between these two particles, the LDL and the lipoprotein A. But there's also, also a significant difference, and that is in order for the LDL, for the fat globule to be bad, to be atherogenic, to cause atherosclerosis, it needs an adhesive tape, a biological adhesive tape. So lowering LDL levels has very little to do with reducing the risk for atherosclerosis and coronary artery disease in humans. The answer has to come from how can we reduce lipoprotein A in our body and especially from this lipoprotein being deposited as part of the flux. Going back to the early studies at Hamburg University, we, meaning my colleagues at the time and myself, started to investigate this new lipoprotein A particle as it relates to its role in atherosclerosis. We investigated inside human arteries. What do we find? Do we find LDL or do we find the lipoprotein A, that is the adhesive tape? And as you can see on this picture, these are histological cross sections through human coronary arteries. Wherever we find the LDL particle marked on the left side with a specific antibody that is giving the color brown wherever we find LDL. And we compare a cross section through the same atherosclerotic plaque just adjacent to the one on the left and stain it with an antibody that detects the adhesive tape we find something very surprising. We see that wherever we find the LDL, there's also the adhesive tape, which means that we are talking about lipoprotein A particles being the basic substance that builds up the atherosclerotic plaque. It also means that earlier researchers had missed to look for the adhesive tape, APOA, and therefore came to the wrong conclusion that LDL causes atherosclerotic plaques. This mistake was made for decades and carried on until the textbooks of medicine today. We went on with our research at Hamburg University and we investigated the question, is there a correlation between the size of the deposits, the bigger the deposits are, is there more lipoprotein A there? And the answer to that is yes. The normal artery walls of humans contained a little bit of lipoprotein A. But as the size of the atherosclerotic deposits increased, there was more and more lipoprotein A deposited, as you can see in this graph.
That was 30 years ago. Today, lipoprotein A is recognized as a leading risk factor for all known forms of cardiovascular disease, heart attacks, that is coronary artery disease, stroke, cerebral vascular disease, peripheral, peripheral vascular disease, wrist stenosis after coronary bypass surgery, or after angioplasty. So while this risk factor is being recognized in the bloodstream, no one has a cure. Thirty years after we identified lipoprotein A as the key substance that makes arteriosclerotic plaques, the deposits that cause heart attacks and strokes in humans, the European Society of Cardiology finally recommended screening for lipoprotein A in patients at risk for cardiovascular disease. So you can see how long it takes until very basic knowledge is being accepted and supported. And yet there's still no cure. There's still no possibility of any drug to influence this lipoprotein A from being deposited in the arteriosclerotic wall. And here comes a discovery that goes back to 1987 when I observed that lipoprotein A is only present in humans and sub subhuman primates, that is chimpanzee, orangutan, gorilla, but not in lower mammals, in lower animals. And interestingly, there was an inverse relationship to the ability to produce vitamin C. So most animals produce their own vitamin C in their livers in high amounts, and for some interesting reason, they don't have lipoprotein A particles in their metabolism. Vice versa, humans and subhuman primates do exactly the opposite. They have lost the ability to synthesize vitamin C, and they suddenly produce this risk factor lipoprotein A in their metabolism. What is the significance of this discovery? Well, here is the answer. There are two alternatives to stabilize an artery wall. Animals produce enough vitamin C. As we all know, vitamin C stimulates the production of collagen. Collagen is the main reinforcement molecule that gives stability and integrity and elasticity to the artery walls. So animals stabilize their artery walls in a natural way, protected from cracks and crevices, and therefore they don't develop cardiovascular disease. Humans, by contrast, do not produce any vitamin C and frequently Essentially, everyone gets too little vitamins in their diets. So what happens is an underproduction of collagen, a beginning instability of the blood vessel wall. And if, we are, uh, if that continues, we would develop uh, something like the Sailor's disease scurvy. If there would be a complete absence of vitamin C, the collagen would stop being produced, and the artery walls would literally break open. This is what happens in the sailors when their gums start to bleed and and they eventually die of internal bleeding. So in this situation, when a human body is receiving too little vitamins, especially vitamin C in the diet, the body thinks, oh my God, pretty soon, the artery walls will bust open because this person is on the way to develop scurvy. How can I come up with protective measures to prevent that this person is dying? And in this situation, a molecule like lipoprotein A becomes actually life-saving. As you can see in the lower portion of these pictures, the sticky lipoprotein uh, enters the blood vessel wall and glues it, uh, glues the cracks and crevices, 
and the supply of cholesterol and other fats is needed to start the production of new cells so that another mending, another repair process is being initiated. So it makes complete sense that in at times of vitamin deficiency, of beginning uh, disintegration of the blood vessel wall, these repair factors enter the wall in an effort to repair the damage and to prevent death from hemorrhagic blood loss through a breaking artery wall. So suddenly we have a, an, an understanding of what this lipoprotein A molecule is and what the significance of it is and why it suddenly appeared during the evolution of uh, the human race. Lipoprotein A is a mobile repair molecule that uses LDL as a transport vehicle in blood to reach the sites of tissue repair, most prominently inside the artery walls. The adhesive apoprotein A, that's the sticky protein on the surface, is a substitute for collagen in the vascular wall whenever it is injured or structurally impaired, for example, by vitamin C deficiency. And you should know this is this little uh, violet structure that you see, this adhesive tape, APOA, is actually three times the size of a collagen molecule. It's huge. And it's a fantastic repair blue molecule. It's like a band-aid inside the artery wall. And because of this new understanding what the lipoprotein A molecule actually is and does, we suddenly understand what is the nature of an arteriosclerotic plaque. What is the nature of these deposits? And we suddenly understand these are not God-given curses um, poor guy got a heart attack, poor guy got a stroke. These are regulatory mechanisms of nature built to protect us from worse things like death from scurvy. So the atherosclerotic plaque is initially a life-saving repair process of the artery wall when it is weakened by long-term dietary deficiency of vitamins and other micronutrients. And only if this process goes too far with long-term vitamin deficiency in our diet over many years or decades, then this process overshoots, overcompensates. That's the nature of these plaques. In order to understand the significance of this new understanding, it is important to compare it to what the textbooks of cardiology and medicine and millions of doctors and health professionals around the world are currently not only thinking but teaching to their patients. The old concept says there is a fat transport molecule, mostly the bad cholesterol LDL that enters the artery wall and deposits their fat contents inside the artery wall. The deposition of these fat molecules or lipids inside the artery wall serves no biological purpose. It's just happening because this molecule is bad, bad cholesterol. What a nonsense. Nothing in nature happens without a cause. But old thinking, conventional thinking, current thinking of cardiology defined it that way. Arteriosclerosis is mainly a fatalistic process. It's just there. It just happens. Sorry, guy. It's just there. Most significantly because of the thinking that it is just a curse of heaven. Bad genes. Lifestyle problems. It is essentially irreversible. If you do not understand the regulatory process behind the deposition of lipoproteins in the artery wall, you will come to the conclusion it is essentially an irreversible process. The new concept is exactly the opposite. We understand that the lipid molecules inside the artery walls are deposited there for a purpose, namely to protect against pending blood loss and death 
through a scorbutic blood uh, artery wall. And thus, atherosclerosis is no longer a fatalistic process, but a regulatory process. And because of that, atherosclerotic plaques are essentially reversible, at least in part. It's a law of biology. If it's a regulatory process and you understand the regulation, the regulation of it, you are able to hold and reverse this process. And in fact, this is what we already published years ago in a clinical study with patients who had coronary artery deposits. Here you see the uh, ultra-fast computed tomography, the CT pictures of a plaque of a 51-year-old patient then. And you look inside the heart and you can see on the left-hand side the deposit in the coronary artery. And one year later, no bypass operation, no angioplasty. The deposit is gone with micronutrients only. In other words, this is the visual proof that through understanding the regulatory process, you can induce the self-healing potential of the body, in this case, the artery walls, and it will do so. And of course, this was the first clinical, clinical documentation of the natural reversal of human coronary artery disease in the history of medicine. In the meantime, more studies have followed that lead, and these are just two of them that I'd like to reference here. The first one was a review of 18 clinical studies with a quarter of a million participants. And high vitamin C blood levels resulted in a 38% reduction from strokes published in the Journal of the American Heart Association two years ago. The second publication relates to heart disease. Analysis of almost 300,000 participants over 10 years showed that vitamin C intake over 700 milligrams per day, that's three quarters of a gram, resulted in a 25% decrease of the cardiovascular disease risk. If we now look at a summary of this new understanding in pictures, you can see the sequence here. First, a healthy coronary artery cross-section. We look inside the artery wall, everything is healthy. The lining of the endothelial cells is dense, the collagen structures are intact. Now, with beginning vitamin deficiency, we see that the lining, the endothelial cell lining, those red structures, become loose. They are no longer tightly together, but they are opening up like my fingers are opening up now. And in this situation, the lipoprotein molecules, lipoprotein A molecules in particular, the yellow marked globules are entering through those cracks and crevices inside the artery wall in an effort to repair the beginning damage. And if that process overshoots, then we see the plaques developing, the deposits, the narrowing of the blood flow that ultimately interrupts the blood flow and causes heart attacks or strokes if it happens in the arteries that eat blood to the brain. And then, of course, if we change the precondition, if we increase the levels of micronutrients, then the healing process starts and the lipoprotein molecules are no longer needed and therefore are being released from the inside of the artery wall, causing a reversal of the cardiovascular process. And because we now have a new understanding, we can suddenly explain why we get heart attacks, because obviously the heart is the only organ that beats. So there's an me extreme mechanical stress on the arteries of the heart. With every heartbeat, they are squeezed flat, and of course it's there where the cracks and crevices, the instability because of vitamin C deficiency is first exposed. We can explain why we get atherosclerosis and not venosclerosis because in the arteries, the blood pressure is much higher, 80 to 140 uh, milli, uh, and, uh, uh, 
Quicksilver millimeter Hg, huge pressure compared to the veins where the pressure is about zero. So we understand that phenomenon too. If we accept that it's not cholesterol that causes the deposits, but it's vitamin deficiency that causes first an instability of the atrium wall. And of course we understand why animals do not get heart attacks because they produce their own vitamin C in huge amounts. And why we humans are exposed to this disease in epidemic proportions because we don't produce vitamin C in our body and frequently get too few vitamins. You've just seen the clinical result from the CT picture where the deposits is there and one year later it's gone. While that is impressive and important for the overall documentation, it does not prove this concept, this evolutionary concept that in species, including humans, that lost the ability of vitamin C production in the body, this alternative repair molecule, apoprotein A, became a lifesaver. That question, that ultimate proof, needed to be brought about in an animal model. Now, you may say, well, there are no animals with lipoprotein A. True. You may say all animals produce their own vitamin C. True, too, with few exceptions. So what to do? Well, the only way forward was to create our own animal model that mimics the human metabolism with respect to these two key metabolic facts. So we created an animal model that, like humans, does not produce its own vitamin C, and like humans, produces human lipoprotein A. In order to accomplish that, we of course needed to change the genes of these animals. So there it is on the right-hand side, a, an animal model that mimics human metabolism and therefore allows to study exactly that question. What happens? with a lipoprotein A molecule when there is too little vitamin C in the diet? Does it just circulate in the bloodstream or does it enter the artery wall in order to repair uh, the deficiency there? And as you can see on this picture, on the left hand side is an animal that was fed too little vitamin C in the diet over several months. And without changing anything in the blood fat or cholesterol or lifestyle or anything, these animals developed plaques, atherosclerotic plaques, because their artery walls began to deteriorate. Low vitamin C, low production of collagen, weakness, growing weakness of the artery walls, and the plaques develop as a beginning repair. On the right-hand side, you see the control animals that received high amounts of vitamin C in the diet, and there are no plaques. This is a look inside the uh, aorta uh, of these animals, so about the same site uh, in those two animals. On the left side, low vitamin C, and plaques develop, and on the right-hand side, uh, these are intact artery walls. The next question, of course, was, do we find inside the plaques the lipoprotein A molecules, basically confirming this concept that uh, there is this repair function uh, in states of vitamin deficiency for this lipoprotein A molecule? And as you can see, the answer to that is yes, too. On the left-hand side, we see that inside the plaques, there are these brown structures. These are uh, um, antibodies that are directed against the lipoprotein A molecule. And wherever the brown color is, there is lipoprotein A. On the right hand side, you see an artery wall, a, a tissue cross section through an artery wall of an animal with high vitamins uh, in the diet, high vitamin C in the diet. And there is no deposition of lipoprotein A detectable. So these experiments conclusively prove the entire model of human cardiovascular disease. It starts with a deficiency 
in micronutrients. It starts with a beginning fragility, weakness of the artery walls with cracks and crevices, and it develops with the deposition of these repair factors inside those cracks and crevices. And now we need to address the question, how come that we find this lipoprotein A particle basically as a hallmark, as a, meta, a hallmark in the metabolism of humans and subhuman primates? And this picture gives the answers. <clears throat> we know from sailors that they die within three to four months during their ship journeys if they do not get limes or sauerkraut or some vitamin C containing fruits. And what happens, the reasons why they die, as I mentioned before, is because the artery walls break open and they, they die of blood loss, internal bleeding, through a, through a basically broken up artery wall. Now imagine sailors dying after three to four months from this condition. And now we go back in the, on the time scale uh, of our human race development. And we imagine that there were ice ages 20,000 to 80,000 years long. So 3,000 generations long, our ancestors lived under extreme conditions of nutritional scarcity. Above all, micronutrient deficiency. There, was no, there were no plants that were growing abandonedly. So they died like flies from scurvy, especially the children. Unless they have inherited a repair molecule like lipoprotein A. So those children that had inherited this fantastic repair molecule had a chance to survive childhood, become grown up, have children on their own, pass on this new gene to the next generation. Whereas all those children without these repair molecules, they died. They couldn't propagate. And this is the explanation why lipoprotein A is essentially found in every human being today. And no humans are alive that do not possess this lipoprotein. And this is why this concept that uh, Dr. Pauling, uh, my uh, colleague and mentor at the time, and I published in 1990, uh, has been proven right. Lipoprotein A is a surrogate, a replacement molecule in evolution, in nature, in the metabolism of species for vitamin C. So we can say the only way we can significantly reduce, possibly even eradicate cardiovascular disease, at least as an epidemic, end it as an epidemic. The only way to do that, the only way to influence, influence the future in a positive way is by accepting the events that happened in the past, by understanding them, accepting them. And in order to accelerate this process, we are offering this fantastic mouse model that I just described to public universities and public research institutions around the world, free of charge, for research. But of course, we expect that the research results are being made public free of charge too, to the world, to the people of the world. I don't want to move towards the end of this talk without clearly recognizing and acknowledging and in fact praising the people who have been involved in this fantastic research project. My publication 30 years ago, 25, 26 years ago, my discovery 30 years ago, which is the beginning, conceptual beginning, there's no possibility at that time that we could prove this. Now, 
This was possible because of these three people. Dr. Netzwicki, who never gave up on believing in what I had published then, even though it was conceptual, who put John Cha, a fantastic young researcher, on this project, who worked on that together with Dr. Ivanov for the last five years in establishing that. Now, many of you have been with us for the past uh, decade, even longer. You sometimes ask, why is it that we are being attacked so heavily? Why are we, Dr. Roth and his organization, singled out and being attacked by the status quo? Well, here's the answer. The greater the quantum leap forward for mankind, the greater the resistance of the status quo. Reducing cardiovascular disease destroys the largest, single largest pharmaceutical drug market, beta blockers, calcium antagonists, AZ inhibitors, statins, etc. So this disease is essential for the survival of this entire industry. And that explains why they have been attacking me and our research over the past two and a half decades like they did. The picture on the left-hand side is not an artificial picture, it's an actual picture taken from the cellar, from the storage room of our law firm. About half a kilometer of files from over the 100 lawsuits that have been brought against us to stop this, to eliminate this, so that you, that mankind, could not see this day to happen, could, so, could not see the proof of this concept to be there in vain. If you go to Wikipedia, you see how, may, how much they try to discredit us, attacking us outside the courtroom by defamation and putting us in the corner of charlatans and unproven things. You may think, well, Wikipedia is a democratic platform. Well. You may think twice. It was founded with seed money from the pharmaceutical industry. Everything that is being published at Wikipedia is being reviewed by the gatekeepers of the pharmaceutical cartel. So when you open the pages of Dr. Roth, you see a good example. And you may have to go to the website wiki-roth.org to find the truth on all the distortions that are currently being carried there. But none of that will hold us up. Why? Why could we overcome all of this? The answer is this, because we are right. In every single lawsuit, we could prove, we could provide the scientific base of that. So today there is no single lawsuit pending anymore because they gave up. And this is a great opportunity. This is the moment we need to use. This is the article that I mentioned where the discoveries that I just referred to were published. The website is given at the bottom, but you can also get it from just going to our drrathresearch.org website that is familiar to you to get direct access to this online article. The significance of this article can be summarized as follows. With this new scientifically proven understanding of cardiovascular disease, the people of the world have the chance to liberate themselves from the number one killer disease of the past century. This is how big this is. We all, entire mankind, now stand at the crossroads. We have the choice for ourselves, for our children, grandchildren, for all future generations. Do we accept a world that is shackled with disease, in this case, cardiovascular disease? Or do we choose a world that is largely liberated from diseases? And it is this battle, the 
battle for ending heart disease that will determine between the two. Because it is now so obvious, it is proven. At the end, I would like to share with you a breathtaking historical analogy that I came across while preparing for this presentation. It's now about 150 years ago that uh, Louis Pasteur discovered that infectious diseases are not caused by a curse of heaven or some other magic event. They are caused by microorganisms that you actually can see under the microscope. And fighting, successfully fighting these microorganisms would end the infection. No one believed him. He was attacked for 25 years, just like we, 25 years, quarter of a century. This is a caricature that shows that whoever is vaccinated with the cow vaccine would essentially grow cows out of the body. And then in July 19, sorry, July 1885, Pasteur successfully vaccinated a nine-year-old child against rabies. That was the turning point. The truth prevailed then, and it prevails now. Nothing can hold up the truth when its time has come. And I was reminded that when we published this scientific discovery, this concept about a new understanding of cardiovascular disease as a result of vitamin deficiency, we found it so important that Linus Pauling and I, after all, he was a two-time Nobel laureate, I was a young researcher, um, we found it so important that we wrote an international call. We sat down and said, we can't do this alone, so we need the support of the international health and research community, of the politi political level, of the people at large. And when you go to the Research Institute website, you will find the entire text of this call. And by the way, this is the handwriting of Linus Pauling. It became his last public appeal before his death in 1994. And it ends with the dramatic sentence, the goal is now in sight, the abolition of heart disease as the cause of disability and mortality for the present generation and for future generations. Imagine. And now we are in a situation since a month ago when this publication came out to say it's no longer a concept, it's reality. This is it. This is the full text of this call. And just about a month ago we had a symposium in the University City of Maastricht. And we revitalized, we revived this call because every sentence, every word in this call is, is now being proven. And you can print it out from the website if you want to have it as a small poster for your uh, living room or your office. I'm at the end of this presentation. If you want to know more about the things I've been just touching upon today, if you want to read the paper, if you want to know the supporting information from third parties about lipoprotein A, about the studies that have been published on this new risk factor, in the meantime, go to the research website of our institute uh, and you will find this picture and the adjacent text that you can then link to and get this information. I would like to end by thanking all of you Many of you have been with us for more than a decade. Thanking you for sticking with us through all those years of attacks. For supporting us because you believed in us, you believed in the research. Now, we enter a different stage. No one 
can credibly attack this research anymore because you can disregard many things, but not a transgenic animal that was switched in just the two things, just the two markers that you want to study. It is as hard proof as it can get. So we are in a situation that we have to go out. We have to talk about this study. We have to talk about this new understanding of cardiovascular disease. And we have to do it now. If we wait for another half year or a year, the status quo will have formed some form of crazy resistance, some form of obstruction of the truth in a different form, a different shape. Right now they're paralyzed. They don't know what to do. The only thing left apparently is that they, from their headquarters in Brussels, they organize a worldwide ban on therapeutic statements on vitamins. This is the reason behind the transatlantic free trade agreement. It's not about free trade, it's about getting access to the government in the US to impose the same restrictive laws on micronutrients and the health benefits of micronutrients that exist in Europe. This is the reason why they are now negotiating a free trade agreement with Southeast Asian region just to do the same. But it's not a sign of strength. It's a sign of desperation, but we got to talk about it to expose the underlying mechanisms behind this frenzy that is currently going on at the political level. There's no other mean to stop the truth except by these kind of anti-democratic, anti-human political maneuvers. Thanks everyone for your time tonight, and I hope you will have great success in promoting the truth and ending heart disease. Thank you. Paul. You can find more information about the things Dr. Arthur was talking about this evening on the website of our research institutes. You can see the web address just there. <coughs> The limiting factor with any discovery like this is how quickly it can be shared. How many people can we reach as quickly as possible? I'm sure that some of you will have questions about what Dr. Rath has been talking about tonight. Obviously, with so many attendees today, it's simply not possible to answer all of those now. If you write to us by any of our websites, or via our social media pages. We will do our best to answer all of them and provide you with any additional information that you may require. Thank you for being here, all of you, and please, whatever you do, share this information as widely as you possibly can. Our next Health Alliance webinar will be June the 24th at 7 p.m. Central European time. Thank you. To all of you for being here this evening, thank you to Dr. Rath for giving up his valuable time to share this groundbreaking discovery and research with us. Stay safe, stay well, and we look forward to seeing all of you back on June 24th. Bye-bye. <laughs>